Okay, hello, let's start off. Okay, good evening, uh, Mr. Carol and my fellow colleagues. So today my presentation about shoulder arthroscopy. Uh, presenter myself, supervisor, Mr. Carol. So uh, definition first, uh, arthroscopy is a minimally invasive orthopedic procedure uh, used to visualize into a joint for diagnostic and also for therapeutic purposes. Uh, in our case, we will talk about shoulder arthroscopy. So there are various applications to do uh, shoulder arthroscopy. Uh, so start starting from diagnostic study, then uh, for loose body removal, rotator cuff repair deprivement, lateral slap, and instability, uh, subacromial depression, uh, AC joint pathology, uh, distal clavicle reception. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, release of supra uh, scapular entrapment, uh, synovectomy, bicep, tenotomy, or tenodesis. So, uh, as, as similar to other uh, uh, procedures, uh, shoulder arthroscopy also has several uh, complications. The most common complication is nerve, nerve injury. Uh, but it's very much voidable and rare uh, since uh, we are inserting portals and very uh, vigilant during our arthroscopic uh, maneuver in the joint. And the other complication are vascular injury and also shoulder disability. The mode of anesthesia for shoulder arthroscopy general, uh, general anesthesia and also combined with regional block. Uh, interscaling and also supraclavicular. This is mainly for post uh, operative pain control. Okay, in terms of positioning, uh, we have two uh, types of positioning for shoulder arthroscope. Uh, first is big chair position, and the second is uh, lateral decubitus position. So uh, uh, we are very familiar with our big chair positioning in our suspect setting. So uh, basically, uh, we have to uh, position patient in a proper position, and then a uh, few things must ensure when uh, strapping the patient's head uh, must be properly padded, and the neck, neck should be stabilized, and then the anesthesia must be comfortable with the positioning, and then there must be, must be a pillow under the knee, so it should be flexed uh, to this 30 degree. And then uh, the positioning of the arm, the arm posterior uh, plate part must be removed so it's free and access uh, easily. And then the hand uh, must be draped and also must be able to freely move. We have the option of putting on a, a hand stand or we can put it on a, a drape on the table. And then uh, on the other hand, uh, we have lateral decubitus position, whereby patient will be lateral decubitus position and there will be a contraction of the uh, system to pull the arm in the th uh, about 30 to 45 degree of abduction. Uh, so there are pros and cons for either this position. So uh, these are the tables. Okay, uh, this is a table showing uh, advantage and disadvantage for both uh, big share and lateral uh, decubitus position. So, uh, lateral decubitus position, uh, the advantage are uh, lead will be traction, so it creates more space, allow us to do more uh, uh, procedure freely in the space, and then. Uh, and then we can see the level tear clearly. And then the operating uh, room, I mean, the patient head won't be in the way. Uh, and then the cautery bubbles uh, during the RF procedure, it will move laterally so it won't obstruct our field. And then uh, there's no uh, increased risk for hypotension or brain in this position. But there are several disadvantages. So since it's a lateral position, it's not anatomic, so very difficult for us to orientate anatomically. And then uh, when the anterior port is introduced, so it's very difficult to uh, uh, to move the arm around the anterior portal. And then uh, in case we have to open 
uh, then you have to reposition and redrip the patient. And then uh, distraction can cause neurovascular or soft tissue injury. And then uh, there's an increased risk of axillary and muscular tendinous nerve, uh, muscular cutaneous nerve uh, during the anterior inferior portal placement. So on the beach chair, uh, the advantages are it's upright, anatomic position, and then there's a uh, ease of examination under anesthesia. The arm not hanging in the way of the anterior portal, so it's easy access for all the portals. And then uh, we no need to reposition the patient in case we need to do open, convert to open. And then uh, can use rigid anesthesia and then also mobility of the operative arm. Uh, there are several uh, disadvantages. Uh, there could be a potential mechanical block use of posterior scope in the posterior or superior portals. Uh, increased risk of hypotensive bradycardia and cardiovascular complication. And then the cautery bubbles may obscure our uh, film. And then the fluid can form the camera. And then there's a theoretical increase in uh, air ambulance. And then the expensive equipment will be uh, needed in case we are using the uh, mechanical arm holder. So uh, the basic instrument we need in shoulder arthroscopy are uh, uh, the scope, uh, 30 degree commonly used, and also 70 degree if uh, needed for certain procedures. And also, of course, light source, suction, irrigation system with pump. So the pump pressure uh, we maintain was 30 to 35, 40. Uh, and this the pump pressure is very important for us is, uh, to control the bleeding, to maintain the pressure. And radio frequency device, shaver and also burp, uh, knife blade to make a skin incision, and sushing stick, uh, troca, probe and also dilator. These are basic uh, for diagnostic purpose, but for further uh, procedure, other procedure, we need additional special stuff. Okay, uh, once we have positioned draped the patient, so we have to mark the anatomical landmarks. So the anatomical landmarks, uh, we have to identify the uh, anterolateral and also posterolateral corner of the acromion, and then we draw a line, and then uh, continue to the scapula spine, and then uh, uh, identify the acro acromial clavicular joint, and also uh, mark outline the clavicle, and also identify the parochoid and mark the parochoid. So from then uh, we will we will that will guide our portal uh, entry site. So these are the uh, basic uh, anatomy of the uh, glenohumeral joint and the coronal uh, sagittal uh, cross section. So from here we can see um, this are the infraspinatus, uh, infraspinatus muscle, teres minor. Anteriorly, we have uh, subscapularis. Okay, and this is the inside the joint. Uh, so this will be our tendon of uh, long head bicep, and then this is the glenoid fossa, and then we have uh, superior glenohumeral ligament, middle glenohumeral ligament, anterior inferior glenohumeral ligament, and posterior inferior glenohumeral ligament. So this will be our capsule. Uh, this is the acromion. This will be our uh, coracoid, an acromial, uh, coracoid acromial uh, ligament. And it's a clavicle and uh, clavicle, uh, clavicle ligament. Yeah. Okay, so roughly this will guide us during uh, intraoperative scope. So the primary portals in art shoulder arthroscopy are uh, posterior portal, interior portal, and also lateral portal. So the landmarks. For posterior portal, posterior portal mainly for viewing and also for procedure. Uh, it will be uh, uh, two centimeter inferior and two centimeter medial in the posterolateral corner of the uh, acromion. So you identify a spot spot and then you put your hand in front of it so to move the uh, translate the humeral head to identify the joint uh, line. Okay, and then uh, so our uh, troca will pass between the infraspinatus and teres minor muscle, and then our aim is towards to the coracoid process. So once uh, we have uh, uh, 
our uh, in the joint, put the camera in, and then we visualize these three structures mainly the glenoid, humeral head, long head or bicep. Then we can uh, open the uh, irrigation to uh, proceed with our scope. Okay, and then the anterior portal for viewing and also uh, used for subacromial decompression. Uh, there are two techniques uh, to get this interior portal, one side out or outside in technique, but we commonly use the outside in technique, whereby we insert, uh, uh, identify the landmark, uh, one to two centimeter anterior to the acid joint and just lateral to the coracoid process. So we put in a needle and then uh, once we visualize uh, from the posterior viewing, uh, we satisfied and then we put in a switching stick, uh, then put in a trock out of water. So the, uh, the inside out technique will be from the posterior portal, we put in a switching stick and then come out uh, at the safe zone at the interior. But uh, this is rarely uh, done. So the, 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 the safest way is the outside technique. And then uh, our Portal uh, will pass through the rotator. Okay, then the, the other point will be the lateral portal. Uh, this is mainly for subacromial decompression purpose. Okay, this portal is uh, the acromial clavic, uh, the acromium, uh, just two centimeter distal to the lateral edge. So, uh, as uh, Mr. Carol told us, we divide into the three parts. And then we have to take the anterior content. Uh, then this our portal will be uh, passed through the deltoid muscle to aim towards the subacromial space. Okay, there are a few uh, secondary portals that we can develop uh, to assist further during uh, in our procedures. Okay, uh, entero inferior portal, uh, five o'clock. Uh, for placement of anterior uh, anchors for anterior lateral repair, uh, located just inferior to the coracoid and posterior inferior seven o'clock placement anchor posterior to the lateral uh, placement for anchor for posterior lateral repair, just two cm inferior to the posterior portal, and navigation uh, is uh, we insert between the acromium and also clavicle soft spot between the at the triangle. Uh, this for visualization of the glenoid, it is a slab repair. And Wilmington or anterolateral port. Uh, these two uh, evaluate repair posterior slab and also rotator cuff region. This is one or two centimeter lateral and anterior to the posterior corner of the acromion. Okay, these are basically all the portals and uh, So the number nine will be the navigation. Uh, two will be our anterior portal, one will be our posterior portal, and uh, three will be our lateral portal. So, uh, anterior, number two, uh, one posterior, nine navigation, three lateral portal, uh, six is uh, five o'clock. Uh, sorry, five is uh, this is the five o'clock. Uh, uh, and then uh, these are the portals uh, we can do for based on the pathology, subacromial instability, slab feature, acromial clavicular pathology. So based on the pathology, uh, you will be needing all these portals. Okay, there are uh, systematic way of weaving into the joint. So there are 15 points that we suggested by the uh, South Carolina.